It is a pleasure to be standing in front of you. It's a pleasure, by the way, after a tour which has gone all over Ireland and all over the UK, to be back in London, ladies and gentlemen. It's a delight to be back at home uh, in one regard. And may I also say, it's interesting to be back in London now, because we left you, and then when we came back, things had changed in London, in a very subtle way. It's like one of those short stories you read as a teenager, one of these science fiction stories where you'd go into the past, right, and then you'd like sneeze on a pterodactyl or step on something, right, and then you'd come back and the whole world has changed. We went to Basing, so Croydon and Aylesbury, and when they came back, you'd elected fat Andy Warhol as the mayor. <laughs> and frankly, if I knew that's what you could get from hosting Have I Good News For You, I wouldn't have settled for Mock the Week. Yeah. <laughs> It is a pleasure. Hello, people at the front. We'll come to you in a moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But there is no, it is a delight to be back, and particularly in this part of the world. I don't live not far from here. Hello to Hammersmith. Hammersmith, one of the economic engines that is keeping this country going. And by Hammersmith, I mean that news agent on King Street where the Polish guys get their jobs, right? Uh, <laughs> the single most important. And I'm not slagging off the Poles. I'm Irish. I love the Poles, although they've kind of stolen our act just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, because they're cheaper than we are, they work harder, and feck it, they had a pope, they're more Catholic than we ever were. Yeah. <laughs> but now we find ourselves back here, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, we will be talking to you as the show goes along, my people in the front row. Don't feel, don't feel scared by that, right? This isn't, and it's, a, it's not some corny comedy thing where I'd slag you off, I'll make gods of you, you know that? <laughs> I will render you extraordinary, you'll be carried out of this building shoulder high, you'll be legends by the end of it, right? Because that's what you do. It's the only reason, it's one of the joys about live comedy is that you get to actually mess around with people and fight about people's lives. It's kind of fun, and it changes every night. And in Oxford, for example, here's a little tip for comedians, always ask another question. Because I asked somebody, what do you do for a living? And he goes, I'm a food scientist. And the entire room went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit boring, I don't like that. Sir. And I went, well, have you ever done interesting as a food scientist? And your man goes, I invented the Solero. <laughs> That's exactly, everyone went, well, well, all right? And I went, really? And I went, all of them? And he went, no, just tropical. <laughs> and I said to him, wow, that's incredible. And we had a long discussion about, like, the ratio of ice cream to stick uh, and how you get the, like, the frozen -y bit to keep the ice cream in. And various technical issues were raised during it. Uh, during which time, like, I was kind of going, my God, there's so many issues here. Did you do all this yourself? And he goes, no, no, no. I led the team. <laughs> Which I thought was a fantastically highfalutin way to describe devising an ice cream. I mean, Shackleton led a team. <laughs> Edmund Hillary led a team. Wolverine, he leads a fucking team. Right? <laughs> but this man invented an ice cream for Christ's sake, and sitting beside him was his wife, who had this fantastic look on her face, this glorious look of, here we go again with the fucking Solero. <laughs> So this is people we've met, like whatever. We met uh, in Manchester, we met a man who put the thin metal strips into notes, what a weird gig that was. We met a guy in Halifax who works for the Halifax. It's that kind of town. Uh, uh, it was my, one of my favorites, actually, one of my favorites was that. Uh, we met a guy, I think it was in Tunbridge Wells, who works in business continuity. Have you ever heard of business continuity? A few of you have to, for those of you who have not heard of business, business country is a brilliant, it's a completely new invented industry, right? It, it's my favorite industry in the world. It, these, these guys who basically go around to large companies and tell them how, basically scare them by going, are you ready for like a, you know, a nuclear attack or a terror attack or a flood? We'll look after it if you aren't. That kind of stuff. Basically army guys with a very vivid imagination scaring the shit out of corporate types, right? <laughs> going into people and going, are you ready for a killer bee attack? And the CEO of Woolworths going, what the fuck would killer bees want in Woolworths? And they go, <laughs> pick and mix. Fuck it, you're right. Uh, it's a brilliant industry. It's a superb industry, right? But it is that kind of stuff. Like, we'll talk to people and hopefully things will occur and it'll be great because things will occur tonight that didn't occur last night when we were here and won't occur when the next thing that we do after this, right? The different things occur every night. I don't have a title for the show. There is a show, but there isn't just me like, hello, hello. We don't all get a turn, right? But, uh, <laughs> but there is a show, but like, I don't have a title for it. I was going to call the show, You Had To Be There. <laughs> and half of that was so that in a week's time, people would see the posters and go, ah, fuck. <laughs> But the other half was that, you know, stuff will occur tonight that won't occur on any other night, and you'll shout things out and I'll react to them and we'll create fantastic stuff that won't occur on any other night. And that's the joy about live comedy. Live comedy is different every night. If you buy Superbad or Anchorman or something on DVD, you'll get a brilliant funny thing, but the same one each time. Whereas here, it'll be different. And I'm trying to reclaim that phrase, because I know 
I know that most of us use, you had to be there, as a bit of a get-out clause, when an anecdote hasn't quite kicked off as royally as you thought it would. <laughs> Do you know when you're going, how was in the pub last night? It was magical. Mick put a pint glass on his nose and ran around going... <laughs> you had to be there. Uh, <laughs> so without any random choice, what's your name, sir? Matthew. How are you, Matthew? How are you? Matthew, are you a local, are you? I'm not. You're not a local. There's an air of mystery already about you, Matthew. Where are you from? How far have you travelled, Matthew? Live in Reading. You live in Reading and you've come, have you come in for the gig? Oh, yeah. You've come for the gig, but I did Reading. There was a teaser in the wedding. <laughs> that makes no sense at all. This kind of, don't feck with my, like, the idea of, I tour, I go to you. That's surely the way it has to work. <laughs> if, if I, if I thought you were just gonna come to me, I wouldn't have bothered leaving the house, right? Uh, <laughs> if I thought, they, if thought all they had to do was go to a hilltop and go, and then you just flock towards me. Jesus, I fucking drove on that M4 for up to 45 minutes to get down to that town. <laughs> and what do you do in Reading, my friend? Proposal manager. You're a proposal manager? Because some guys just, they have no fear of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of proposals do you manage? Engineering company. Engineering company, for an engineering company. What kind of stuff do you make? Do you make big things, small things, tiny things? What do you make? Oil refineries. Oil refineries in Reading. <laughs> Reading is about. 400 miles inland. <laughs> Surely your first proposal would be, move the fucking company to the shore. <laughs> Surely that's the first thing you can do. And this is an estimate. <laughs> really you wandering around with a divining rod in the middle of Wiltshire or whatever county it's in. I'm not sure exactly. Is it Wiltshire? It's Reading in Wiltshire. Bartram. It's Bartram. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Pick on the guy. Have you heard the accent? I'm not from around here, right? <laughs> I haven't learnt off all the counties, all right? Yeah, OK, in Yorkshire, where you're from, right? Uh, no. <laughs> Walking with a divine... Is, is, where's the nearest oil to you? Nearest oil? The nearest oil? Yes, sir. Yeah, in a garage, thank you very, very much. <laughs> People are queuing up to give out to you for this ridiculous business plan. This time. <laughs> Complete strangers are giving out to you at this stage. Like, whatever. Is there any oil near you? Not really, no. Not really, no. It's a rather relaxed job you've got for yourself, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> So what do you do in Tenerife? I look after the polar bears. Uh, so, <laughs> Jesus, that's... You kept busy. Nah, you know, I get a lot of time to do whatever I want. Uh, to be honest, it's quite relaxed as the whole thing. Have you done one in Aberdeen? Have you? No. No, you're not. Because that seems to be the closest one really to where you are here. Aberdeen, brilliant town, fabulous place. Two industries, right? Uh, which is oil and lap dancing. Uh, the, the two major economies in Aberdeen are oil and lap dancing. Basically, half of them take it out of the ground and the other half rub it on themselves. Uh, so <laughs> It's just fantastically circular. It's very ecological uh, as a whole thing, like whatever. That's, no, it's great. Fantastic. Well, thank you for taking the long journey down. Pick a number between one and ten. Four. You're going to go for four? One, two, three, four. How are you, sir? You're well. <laughs> it could have been any other number, right? And we will judge you on whether or not this work works out well, right? Because God knows. What's, what's your name, sir? Paul. Hiya, Paul. Paul, where are you from? Um, I'm from here. You're no, from, from here? Fulham. You're from Fulham? Well, Limerick originally. Well, Limerick originally, yeah. I'm beating you down here, aren't I? You're getting slowly... The more questions I ask, you're driving yourself further away. I'm actually not off this planet. And you'll rip a head off and you're going... You'll just be on 10A, flapping wildly in every direction. <laughs> sorry, Doctor Who. Uh, sorry. You're from Limerick originally. When, how long are you over here? How long are you over here, Paul? Uh, three years. Three years at this stage. And, Paul, what do you do? What, did you, what skills did you bring to the London economy? Uh, software engineer. You're a software engineer. How's that working out for you? Good. Is it good? Yeah. What have you made? What have you done? Software for what? Uh, <laughs> um, banking. Stuff. Banking. Getting more and more exciting, isn't it? It's like comedy gold, isn't it? <laughs> you could have gone for three, fucker. Uh, you could, look at him. Look at him. This guy is gold here, right? And this guy has a perfectly reasonable technical job. Technical jobs are the bane of a comedian's life. This kind of IT slices of, of career stuff, like whatever. But just for banking, for God's sake, like whatever. Any particular type of banking? Uh, I work for Visa. You work for Visa? We're familiar with their work. Yeah, we don't have a particular emotional response, as you can judge by the fact that it didn't turn into panto crowd. Whereas I dig for oil in Reading, the whole place was going, well, that's clearly fucking nonsensical. Right, uh, 